Potomac Bead Company and I today am going to do this fun Calypso bracelet for you. It is a bracelet that is based on herringbone stitch and we're going to go from narrower to wider. This can be done in a bracelet or in a necklace form. It's kind of up to you guys. It'll bend nicely because of that herringbone shape that you can wear it around your neck or I'm going to make it into a bracelet. So you can also kind of affect the design and change it up. So this is more of a give you ideas and help you guys create on your own, as well as give you an exact pattern if you want to follow. If you need any of the materials to do this Calypso bracelet, you can go to the top little corner to the eye in the corner, kind of scroll your mouse over there. That will give you any information from us as the video creator. You can watch a um, little information pop up, which will give you links to some of these different products online. So for this bracelet, it's very standard materials. I'm going to be using some 8 OC beads. The 8 OC beads that I'm going to be using are the Mayuki brand, and these are the check coated Crystal Labrador Mayuki seed beads, and those are an 8 OC bead. So those are our check coated Mayuki in the Crystal Labrador nice bright silver. In addition to the 8 O's seed beads, we're going to be using some 15 O's on the outer edge here. And the 15 O's that I'm going to add to the outer edge are the Miyuki 15 O's in the Duracoat galvanized gold color. Uh, you're not going to see a ton of it, it's just going to be on the outer edge like I said and just dress it up a little bit. So the Duracoat galvanized gold, galvanized champagne, galvanized dark gold, any of those will work for you, but you need a couple 15 O seed beads. So you have your 8s and your 15s, and then you're going to use some 11 O seed beads. In the design, I used three different colors of the 11 O seed beads. I'm going to stick to that same idea and use three different colors as well. For my three different colors, I'm using the galvanized gold, and these are all the Miyuki brand. I'm using the Duracoat Opaque Turquoise, and then I'm using the Montana Blue Gold Luster. These are going to be used, I'm going to throw in um, the turquoise along the outer edge here, and then the darker blue towards the middle, and some of the gold here on the little tops of almost that eye looking thing. In the middle, it's optional, but you can throw in a crystal. I'm going to use a 2 by 3 millimeter rondelle in the Potomac Crystal in the opaque turquoise blue color, and that'll pick up nicely going my blue from the inner to the outer edges as well. So you have your three 11 OC beads that you're going to need, one 3 millimeter bead, this is a 2 by 3 millimeter rondelle, and then you have your 8 L and the optional, but I think they're really going to dress it up, 15 OC bead as well. In addition to the seed beads to do the Calypso, you're also going to need a clasp, and I have um, a cut button in the turquoise color that I'll be using as a clasp, which we'll add at the very, very end. I am going to be using some wildfire beading thread in .006 in my green color. Um, I like that because it blends with tons of stuff. And I'm also going to be using a size 10 beading needle. So if you want to use a 12, you can use a 12, um, but I like a 10. It's a little bit stiffer and easier to kind of pull when I'm working with this project. You are going to use a fair amount of thread. So depending on your wrist size, uh, we're also going to be adding thread to the project. I'll show you how to do that as we add and as we kind of keep creating. We also uh, want to have handy a pair of pliers. That is because I use a thread burner or a thread zap in order to burn my thread off my spool. I also use this at any of the connection points where I have my thread to burn down the edges of the thread. When you burn the thread, you do get a little bit of a ball on the end, um, just from the fusing. And what I like to do is take my pliers, flatten out that end of the thread, and that makes it a lot easier to thread your needle. You also want a nice workable surface, a bead mat. Um, when I'm working kind of out of the room here, I use my bead on board as well. So something nice, uncluttered, unorganized, makes it a lot quicker and easier for you to start your beading. So to get started, I want you to get about five feet of beading thread onto your needle. And we're gonna go ahead and make little piles 
of each of our beads. You can cut apart your uh, crystal strand if you have that and uh, lay out about 10 or so of those depending on your wrist size because you're going to need one per component. You can also do this bracelet as a bangle and completely ignore the clasp. That's up to you. Or I kind of went back and forth with putting a clasp garden push clasp on it. So there's a bunch of different options that you can do and like I said we'll add that at the very very end. So to get started, five feet of beading thread on your needle and then piles of all of your beads ready to go. So to get started, the very first thing that I wanna do is add a stop bead onto the project. To add the stop bead onto the project, you're gonna pick up a bead that is not part of your project. And usually I pick up one that's in a different color so I know that it's going to come off. And I'm gonna leave about eight inches of thread on the opposite side. That's because I'm going to be going back and actually adding the clasp, like I said, after the fact. So to do a stop bead, we're taking the thread and needle away from that tail through the bead two times. You'll see two strands then of the thread exposed on the outer edge there, and um, that's how we're gonna get it off eventually. This technique, like I said, is completely based on herringbone stitch. There's two rows of herringbone stitch, one on each outer edge. From there, basically, you can kind of see in the middle and at the end how we have the herringbone that we're doing a tubular herringbone but separating it out with adding some extra seed beads in between. To do the tubular herringbone, if you're not familiar with herringbone, you may want to stop this video, watch one of our other videos um, on the herringbone stitch, learn how to do that herringbone stitch, it'll make it a little bit easier for you to follow along. But if you're ready to go and want to follow along with this video, we are going to start by picking up four of our 80 seed beads. Let those four seed beads drop down next to your stop bead. We're going to then make a circle with those beads by going back through all four of the seed beads. When I pull tightly then, the seed beads kind of stack next to one another, that I have two on the bottom and two on the top. Eventually, these are going to be sitting side by side. Right now, they're sitting top and bottom. Here on the side then, what I'm going to get ready to do is I'm going to get ready to start my herringbone stitch. So the herringbone stitch, like I said, if you're unfamiliar with it, is based on a method of adding basically two beads at a time. You're going to go through your first bead and out and what that's going to do is create a little bit of an opening of those two beads. Put two more beads onto your needle and sew down the bead beside it. That's going to sit two beads in a V right on top of the two below. On the other side now, what I'm going to do is take my needle and thread, go through the first set, so I'm kind of covering with my fingers there, you can see my original four beads. I added two more, I'm going to go through the original bead, which would be the third bead, and add two more of my 80 seed beads, and then sew down through the fourth bead towards the stop bead. Let those two beads then sit kind of separated out, and that's going to be your second row of your herringbone. At this point, I'm going to push the beads so that way they kind of sit on top of one another in order to start my tubular stitch. So I'm going to kind of pinch them. It's a little bit hard to see there. I'm pinching them so I have the two sitting on top of one another. The thread again is coming out right next to the stop bead. I'm going to go up through two beads on the opposite side of that stop bead. So I'm going up through two of the beads and pulling nice and tight. I'm going to lay it back out just so you can see what I did. So I added these two beads here and we sewed down through the 80 next to the stop bead. I then, holding it in kind of a pinched method, sewed up the two beads that are sitting right above the stop bead. It's going to be bead number one that was on your thread as well as the first bead that you put on in the second row. Every time we add a row, we're going to be adding four beads. 
two in between each of our herringbone rows. Again, we're just going to kind of pinch that together. Add two more beads, and you're going to sew down through the 8-0 on the opposite side. So that would be the second bead that you put on on your grouping of four. Let those two beads kind of sit opened up, and we're going to jump over to the other side of the herringbone, going through the 8-0 that sits across. Again, two more beads go on and we're gonna sew down through the bead next to it, and you can see I'm turning it in my hands as I go. Give a nice little tight pull and separate those beads. Every time I get back to the side with the stop beads, I'm going to do a step up by going through two of my eightos, the row previous, and then the first bead that I just put on in the row I completed. Herringbone is gonna sit open a little bit, until you add the next row. I'm gonna add another row of my herringbone stitch. So two beads go on. I'm coming out the bead, which would be in the row of the stop bead. I'm gonna go down the bead on the other side. Let those beads open up and sit. Take my thread over up one bead from the previous row, creating that bridge thread. You should always see a thread on every single time you're going around. Add two more beads and down the opposite side. Let those beads fold back. Now I'm back to my starter side where that stop bead is, so I need to do two beads in order to step up. Now we're actually going to start in on our pattern. So you'll kind of catch more of that herringbone as we continue and as you have your bead pattern grow. So these beads are actually going to sit separated and one is going to become the top row and one is going to become the bottom row. You can see it kind of wants to do that already. Because I want to add just a little bit of beads at the top and at the bottom, I don't want to see the, the actual uh, beading thread. So, as we're doing the herringbone and adding two beads at a time, we're going to add a 15-0 between those two beads. So from now on, when you add your two 8 0s you're going to add a 15-0 between. So I'm getting ready to start my next row, adding my 8 0s with a 15 between to cover up the thread. Give a nice tight pull, and now I'm coming over to go over and bridge over to the other side. Instead of bridging over to the other side right away, here's where we're gonna get that expanse of the decrease and increase of the Calypso. So you're gonna take one of your 11 O's and go up to join the other side of the herringbone. When you're at the other side of the herringbone, add your eight O's. And without saying it every time, there's a 15 O in between, remember. I'm gonna go down the opposite side. Give a nice tight pull, that's kind of the key to herringbone. On the opposite side then, I need to mirror what I did on the first side, adding one of the blue seed beads, and then stepping up through the last two, or the next two 8 seed beads. And that's gonna open it up a little bit and put a seed bead in between my herringbone rows. From here, doing another row of the herringbone, go down the opposite side, When you're out the side then, to connect the two sides of the herringbone, we are now gonna add three of our 11 O's. And then sew up the 8 O on the opposite side. This is gonna open up that link a little bit more. From there, add your next grouping of eights. So down, when we're here on the side then, and we're back to that starter side with the stop bead, so we know that we need to go ahead and add, go up two beads. So I'm going to add three beads and then go up two.
from there then we have the start of our expanse that we have one bead and then three beads. We're going to continue expanding and adding in our beads and sequences and continuing with that herringbone stitch. So again we're coming out to start our herringbone. So you're going to do your sides of your herringbone which are always the 8, 15, 8. So down through the other side and then when I'm out on the side here, my next step is in my pattern is to add four of my opaque blue color. So we went from one to three, now to four. And I'm pushing these down almost so that they lay flat into a diamond shape rather than puffed up. That's going to make the thread a little bit tighter. Next, we have our herringbone. Sewing down through the herringbone, giving a nice tight pull, making sure that's nice and tight, adding four more of our turquoise beads, and then because we know we need to step up, because we want to see that bridge between the two beads, and we're on the starter side, we're going to step up and add four beads. So you can see both sides are going to mirror one another. From there, I'm ready to add the next row of my herringbone. Coming up and going down. And now here is where I'm gonna switch my color. So instead of doing that turquoise again, I'm gonna go ahead in and add five beads of that Montana blue. You could do the same color. I'm just doing this to get kind of a different look for it and just kind of bring more attention towards the center. So five beads go on, give a nice tight pull, back to the other side of the herringbone then, add in that herringbone stitch, give it a tight little yank, and now mirror the other side, five beads go on. Now we're going to step up so we can do our next row by going through the last two beads on the side of the herringbone. Give a nice little tight yank. You can see that nice opening starting to occur. Continue with the herringbone. When I come out this time, rather than continuing with that Montana color, I'm going to grab two of my gold, one of my crystals, and two gold. Go over to the other side. So you can see that's going to bring that blue right in the center there. You could also make this into a really cool evil eye pattern if you wanted to do some blue and white and black beads. On the other side then, Coming down, doing a nice tight pull, and then instead of adding another crystal, what I'm going to do is use this opportunity to kind of link the two sides together. So I have the two sides, I want to add two of my 11s. So through that crystal, the same crystal that's already there, and then add two more seed beads. What that's going to do is create an X on the design. And I'm going up through the two seed beads on the side, the two eights. So I'll show you from the middle then. It kind of positions that crystal and fills the middle a little bit. So that way the crystal doesn't become the focus of the project. It just kind of sits recessed in the project, which is what I want. If you do want it to be the focus of the project and you want it to kind of puff out in the middle a little bit, you can add crystals to both of the sides. From here then, we're starting to do a degress. So instead of adding beads now, we are going to decrease the beads. So I'm continuing with my, with my herringbone, and I'm going back to that Montana color, adding five beads in, which you might see the thread a little bit to start with. Don't worry about that. You want to pull tightly. 
Go ahead and add your herringbone. Again, you kind of hold down a row and give a nice tight pull. That's going to tighten that up. And then on the back side here, I'm going to repeat doing my five beads and then up two beads. If you do want the crystal also to stand out a little bit more, instead of using 11 O's on the side of it, you can use 15 O's on the sides here. Uh, for the 15 O's, you'll want a count of six or seven, depending on the brand that you're using. When I'm on the side then, I'm sure you guys have the have it by now, but when you're on the side again, you're gonna just degress and decrease the amount of seed beads that you're using. So I'm finishing off the pattern, the opposite of what it is, and going back basically to the start. So I went from my five of my Montana down to my four of my turquoise. I'm continuing to add the sides of the herringbone, going from one side to the other. If you always forget where to step up, because if you forget to get to step up and you just kind of keep going, you're going to get a spiral pattern, which we don't want for this. You can always remember that it's the side with a stop bead is where you step up to. If you forget to step up and you just jump to the last bead, you'll also see a weird kind of funky hole that gets created. Continuing with the herringbone then. Um, downgrading from my four beads down to three. And I tried it um, decreasing and increasing then when we get past this from three to two to one and it was just kind of too much overkill. That's why I skipped from one to three. On the other side then, I'm gonna do the same thing, decrease to three, and go back up. Give a nice tight pulls, and you can see the effect that it's having there, kind of pulling that calypso in. Now I'm gonna get to the point where I'm adding one bead. You're down to where you're really going to kind of close it off. Finishing the herringbone then, we're going to close off the other side. Giving a nice tight yank so you don't see lots of extra thread in there. And then what I'm going to do is three rotations where I don't actually add any of the seed beads in. So I'm not going to add any seed beads in um, as far as in the middle, I'm just going to go back to that standard herringbone stitch, still with the gold beads in between. But I'm going back to just going right across, not adding any seed beads, excuse me. What that's going to do is kind of pinch those edges together. And make it really um, obvious that my pattern has ended. So there you have it, kind of the pattern ended. And I like this bracelet because it's substantial, it's almost double-sided. You could actually make it double-sided and make it reversible by doing different thread colors on each side, or different CB colors rather, on each side. So that's a whole nother idea. I'm gonna do one more pass of my herringbone without adding any extra seed beads in between. Just spinning it around. Could also do each little, um, each little diamond or each little eye as its own color too. Spinning around then, I have completed two passes where you can see that there's two threads here that don't have any seed beads in between. Now I'm gonna go back in and start that Calypso design again. So it's right and it, very easy to repeat. Going in, adding your seed beads, coming down for your herringbone, and then you're ready to start picking up your beads again. Again, in a pattern of one, 
and then three, four, five in your middle. Oops, dropping my C beads off. And just continuing on with your design. So there I have my one bead and then I'm just gonna continue on with the design, adding and making the bracelet a little bit longer. So you're gonna continue this design. This is a good one to kinda of put on pause now. If you need to watch the video again, you can watch from the start how to increase those. But by now you should probably have the actual increase and decrease and how it's um, going to look and how it's going to work. And you're going to work on it for a while. I'm gonna switch off my board here and go back to my bead on it board work for a little bit and then I'll come back to you guys and show you the progress and we'll go on basically and figure out the next steps. So I'm almost kind of done my second little um, Calypso eye there and I am uh, to the point where I'm out of thread because I never start with five feet. It would take too long to pull it through for you guys to see on camera. So I started probably only with about two and a half feet. I'm gonna show you how to add some thread in the method that I do. I'm towards the back of the project and I'm coming out one of the herring bones. So rather than being in the top of one of the herring bones, I'm coming out at the bottom. I'm at a point where I'm ready to add seed beads. Taking your new thread after you burn it off your spool, I'm gonna tie the thread around, the new thread around the old thread. So the old thread's just kinda hanging out there. And the new thread gets tied in a loop. You can see right there, you can kinda see it move along it in a loop right along the old thread. This is gonna allow that old thread to kind of migrate up and down the previous thread. What I wanna do is pull it nice and tight, push it down to the end of my herringbone there really tightly, and now start to pull both ends of the thread, the old end and the new end, and tie those in a knot. I'm Gonna do that once right over left, Switch hands, left over right. And get that knot nice down and in there. Take your thread burner then. Burn down those thread edges, but I wanna keep them on so I remember where they are in case you wanna glue them or burn them down further. Or just in case you get to a realization that you added it the wrong way, you don't wanna burn it off more so. So I'm just gonna go back into the design Grab my pliers, pinch down on my thread, grab my needle, thread my needle, and get ready to continue. So now that I have my thread attached, I'm just going to ignore that that thread attachment is even there and just go back and start back up with my design. I did want to mention before we get too far, you can see that it kind of bows one way. That's because of the way that the herringbone sits. It actually doesn't sit exactly even. It kind of sits on an angle. And that is why also your crystals are always going to kind of pop up more if you're using the exact same size as I am. They're going to pop up more on the front side and be more hidden in the back. It also is creating a nice kind of angle, which it naturally is going to sit on your wrist or it's going to kind of angle a little bit on your neck if you want to do it as a necklace. So I'm going in now and I'm like I said, I'm just continuing with my stitches, adding on and increasing and decreasing all of the beads as I go. Going from three then to my one. And then I'm going to do two stitches where I just have the middle with no beads and then I'm gonna start that Calypso eye over again. So I have my design done and I'm kind of showing you guys the curve of it so that way if you wanna continue on with the necklace. And I ended up with six of my uh, little eyes here basically. So when I continue, I would just continue on building as is and it would make a really, really pretty necklace. Also, it would make a great necklace to add a pendant or something on to the bottom of, so just kind of an idea. Or to play around with it and get something totally different, which is something that I'm playing around with too. 
so you can kind of see a little preview of something you might see in the future. When you're done and you kind of move it back to the bead mat, you can see that the backing here kind of sits recessed in a little bit from the front, and that's when you're going to see that crystal a little more. Again, if you want to see the crystal and you want it to pop more, go ahead and use some 15 OC beads on either side in place of the Montana. So what I'm going to do now is get ready to add my cup button. So again, I kind of went back and forth with clasp versus cup button. And because of the way that it fits my wrist, I decided I am going to cup button it. So I'm at the very end and I have um, my beads on just like I would get ready to continue on with the design. From here, I would continue on with my design of one bead at a time and then continue up. I'm going to actually flip over and do the starter side first. So I'm going to take off my stop bead. And I'm going to take out actually the first kind of rowish of beads. So you're going to have to go in here and a lot of times what you'll need to do in order to take out that row of beads is take your needle and go back and pull one thread at a time, kind of figuring out which thread goes first and second and third, because we basically created a big stop bead here by going around it two times. So I'm just going in and kind of taking out the thread and expanding that so you can see that it now has that expanse that we're back to almost the start of the actual herringbone stitch. So if you want to, and you want to make it a little bit smaller in size, we're going to take off one row of the herringbone stitch. And if you want to, you can take off the second row. And as you pull, you'll actually be taking off kind of two beads at a time. So I want to end, because of the length of mine, right at the very end of one of my actual um, diamond designs. If you need that additional length, go ahead and keep that on. So don't take it off. Just take off your stop bead. From there, now I'm going to go on and actually put on my button. You can do your button or your loop on this end, it doesn't really matter which. So I have my needle on my thread now, and I'm going to go in and add my button. To add the button, the first thing I'm going to do is close up this herringbone stitch. So let me kind of refocus here for you guys a little bit, so we can close up that stitch. I'm going to go down through the sides of the, of the herringbone, excuse me and up through the middle without adding anything. So I'm just going basically reversing the herringbone without adding any beads. And that's gonna close up then that kind of link between the two. From there, we're gonna get ready to add our actual clasp. So to add the clasp, I wanna come out between my two rows of my herringbone. So I'm gonna come out kind of on the sides here between the two rows. From there, taking your thread and needle, Go ahead and add one 8 seed bead, and then I'm going to add three of my gold 11 O's and go up through the turquoise cup button. From there in the middle of the turquoise cup button, I want to add a 11 O in my darker blue color, my gold 11 O, and then another one of the Montana and back down the other side. If you want to, you can also add one of your crystals in there. That's kind of up to you. Coming out the other side then, go ahead and add three more 11 O seed beads. So back through that same 8 O seed bead that you added first. Give a nice tight yank because you want that to sit right over top of that opening between the two rows of herringbone. We're coming out one row, we're coming out the bottom row of the herringbone. I'm gonna go into the top row of the herringbone on the opposite side. And what that's gonna do, if I don't get my thread twisted first, is it is gonna bring that seed bead then right into the middle. So that way it's gonna sit between the two rows of herringbone. From there, I'll reinforce, going back up through the side here, and then go back up through the middle, 
through the seed bead, the three seed beads on the side, and up through the cut button. That way the button is actually not to the bottom or the top, it's actually sitting along the side, or the middle rather, of the button. And then the middle of that herringbone stitch. When we get to the other side, we're going to do the loop the same way, kind of adding one singular 8 bead to link them all together. Oh, missed my 8 -0. From here, then, I'm going to tie off the thread. I'm going down that 8 down one of my sides, and I'm going to tie off the thread. To do so, I'm going back a row of herringbone stitch. I'm going to add in my missing 15 0. Go back up the other side here. And I'm going to tie off a thread by going underneath the bridge thread there, making a loop, and tying a knot. Sewing then through the next bead, I'm going to sew basically to the opposite side. Do the same thing, go back in, and if you're familiar with herringbone stitch, when you get started with the bracelet, just start with the 15 O's right away. And you don't need to kind of do this last little step and add them in, that final one at the end. That's easy to do, but then you don't have to bother. From there, I'm going to knot off the rest of my thread, making a loop, going through it once, twice, and making that nice sewer's knot. Give a nice tight yank, and then if you want to, you can put your thread down along the side somewhere of the herringbone stitch, pulling that knot in further, and then you have your button attached to the one end. From there, I'm going to take my thread burner, burn the needle and thread off, and take that thread end and burn it down onto the project. You also will have other places in the project where you added thread. I added it twice. I'm going to go ahead and burn that thread down as well. I usually do this just at the very end of the project. You want to make sure when you're burning down the thread, um, if you want to, you can glue those thread ends, but when you're burning down the thread ends, don't burn your project. You'll be so sad. Now we're going to go back to that ending side, and I'm going to make the loop for my bracelet. So going back to the ending side now, I'm going to take the needle off that thread end. And on the ending side here, again because of fit, because I want it to fit my wrist and I don't want it to be huge on my wrist, I'm going to go ahead and take out the last two rows that I did. So I'm kind of doing it to fit because I want them to end right at the end. I'm just taking those threads off. So you can easily make it bigger or smaller by taking off those last couple beads or adding a, a row or two of beads on at the end. And you don't have to figure that out until the very end. All right, if you have a pretty standard size wrist, you are most likely gonna keep those herringbone stitch, stitches on. From here then, I'm gonna go back through and close this up like I did the other side going through all the seed beads right there at the end, kind of spinning it around, going up and down, just like the herringbone would do. You can go into the 15s or I'm just ignoring them. When I'm coming out of one of the beads, I'm gonna pick up an 8-0 seed bead, just like I did on the other side. And now I'm gonna make the loop for my clasp. So because the predominant color on the end is that dark um, is that light blue. I'm not going to put the dark blue, that might look a little funny. I'm going to make my loop out of my gold 11 O seed beads. So I'm going to kind of gather up some of your 11 O's here, and you could do your 15 O's if you like a small loop, that's up to you. And this is your opportunity to take all of those beads and kind of clean up your bead mat. You want about 25 to 27 if you're working with a cut button. It depends on what kind of clasp you like or have. If you are using a regular clasp, I would suggest um, using some wire guards or wire protectors. 
think that makes a nice polished look to the end. I'm going in here and making my loop. This also kind of follows the gold line that you can see right at the top and at the bottom of the herringbone piece. Once I have my beads on to make my loop, I'm going to go back through the 80 seed bead here, give a nice tight pull, and then just like we did on the other side, we're coming out one corner bead, we're going to go into the opposite corner to pull that nice and in the center. From there, go into the bead next to it. Give a nice tight pull, back up to the eight, and reinforce your loop. To reinforce the loop, I'm sewing back through all the seed beads. And I should have said on the first side too with the, with the button, if you want to, you can do three times to reinforce, you want to make sure to at least do two times to reinforce because your clasp is always where you're going to have kind of the most wear and tear on the bracelet. From there, I'm going back down the 80 seed bead. We can kind of inspect it and see exactly which seed bead hole you did not go into yet, which for me is going to be this guy right here. And that'll help center it even more. From there, just like the other side, I'll kind of go through. And this side, I don't have to add in those 15 O's. What I am gonna do is knot the thread along the sides, going back a couple rows of my stitch, and then tying off with that sewer's knot. Doing once, twice going through that loop. And then I'm going to take it further back in the project a little bit and knot it off more. Going from the front, front of the bracelet here to the back of the bracelet along the herringbone stitch so that way you don't see the thread. And I'll tie it off along the back here. Going underneath one of the bridge threads and making a loop. Once I have that loop then, excuse me, take the thread, throw it once and twice if you can. Do a nice tight pull and then take that knot a little further down somewhere else if you want. You can even sew across the project, knot on the other side. It's kind of up to you where you want to knot and where you want to get rid of your thread. You just want to make sure that you are in between beads and not going over top of any beads. So I'll take it to the very end there, do another nice tight pull, and go ahead then and burn down on the back of the project. Once you're done adding your loop and your button, your bracelet is finished. You can put it on, wear it. I love the fact that this is almost like a stackable bracelet that you could make multiples of these and wear them stacked one inside the other. Play around with the colors, play around with the designs, and you can see here's another way that you could actually make it a little bit more substantial is by doing it more rows of the herringbone wide. Again, if you need any of the materials to do the bracelet, you can go back to the beginning of the video to the little eye in the top corner of the video, press on that and it'll give you um, some information from us to get any of the materials that you need. A bunch of you guys probably already have the materials to it. It's kind of a nice, simple, you may already have it bracelet design. And you can also follow us if you want to, subscribe to this YouTube channel um, and follow us on here as well for regular updates on different projects that we have, new beads, new inspiration, and really what's going on in the beading world. You can also stay connected with us at potomacbeads.com. You can join us there um, to shop online. 
uh, find out information about the different stores that we have and the classes that we offer too, and then some patterns that are available as well. The other thing that you can do is stay connected with us on Facebook and also ask to join our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. If you join the Facebook group, it's a wonderful interactive group with different um, jewelry artists and makers and designers and people that just love making, designing, and enjoying the craft of the jewelry making. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.